The concept of a dopamine fast is simple. Remove all sources of external pleasure from life. That includes the feeling of an Instagram like, the taste of a chain food hamburger splurge, or the intense highs of watching your latest Netflix love. In its most basic form, you can sum it up like this. It's what healthy people do. Turning off your computer at night, taking time off on weekends, taking holidays. Become so bored that marginally less boring stuff becomes more fun. Hi, my name is Dr. Saab Johal and welcome to my channel, The Useful Psychologist, where I use my 30 years of experience and two doctorates in psychology to bring you my take on the hot topics in psychology applied to business, home, organizations, family, mental health, and your life applying the best knowledge to solve your problems. Okay, back to dopamine fasting. Now, some of the big tech companies are already onto some of this, though maybe in a roundabout way. Take, for example, Instagram, now hiding the number of likes you publicly have displayed. Or YouTube, now rounding out the number of subscribers that you have. All these are external sources of reinforcement of behavior, which theoretically help to provide a cascade of dopamine hits throughout our days. A dopamine fast, theoretically, is a return to how our brains are evolved to function. Less external stimulus, or at least far less frequently. The hope is that by doing this, you can limit your brain's exposure to quick hits of dopamine, the neurotransmitter most commonly associated with pleasure, reward, and motivation. Then, once you return to your life, you can really savor that neurochemical ecstasy from which you've been deprived. You can actually notice the difference, feel the highs and lows again, and be more able to tolerate them, perhaps, rather than feeling the dissipation of a dopamine hit and, God forbid, boredom, and then actively seeking out something, anything, to stop that from happening again. Dopamine fasting has gained a reputation as the latest Silicon Valley productivity hack to jumpstart motivation. It exists in the realm of microdosing and ketone ester shots. Just substitute LSD or ketones for the monastic self-discipline of a dopamine fast and bingo! You're part of the very latest trend of what ironically will purportedly make you a better human being and also in turn increase your productivity too. Forgive me for my cynicism. Now, dopamine fasting indeed seems to be the latest in a long line of self-improvement tools for the hyper-focused or people looking for distraction from their day jobs or people looking for a way of getting themselves out of a rut or a funk or feeling generally low and burned out. Modern life can do that to you. And modern life is complex. Does it really make sense to lay it all on dopamine as the critical pathway in these complex interactions? And if that's the case, can a simple decluttering of our lives and self-discipline for 24 hours actually be enough of a reset to be able to tolerate and flourish if the rest of our lives are just horrible? Probably not. But before I throw the baby out with the bathwater, could they actually be onto something here? The top dopamine fasting video on YouTube has almost 1.7 million views at the time of me making this video. And one LinkedIn video describing the practice got over 100,000 views in 24 hours. I wish. But just because something is popular doesn't mean it's right, right? Essentially, dopamine fasting has one foot in amateur neuroscience and the other in the realm of highly structured meditation. Those who discuss the practice on subreddits like our self-improvement trace it back to vipassana meditation retreats, a type of retreat where people spend 10 or more days in self-imposed reflective silence. Some dopamine fasters explain their fast as effective because of scientific principles. And while nothing has been definitively proven, in some ways, those theories may not be that far-fetched. Let's take an example of one way that someone might plan a so-called dopamine fast. Chelsea's plan for Saturday was simple. She would rise around 7 a.m., she would go for a long bike ride, bring along a journal, and not use any technology for the entire day. It would be a time to check in and reevaluate her life. Seems simple, right? Okay, what about a more extreme example? Proposed by someone who runs a YouTube channel on self-improvement and who also has a highly viewed video on dopamine fasting. His dopamine fast, in contrast to Chelsea's, was a day of pure boredom. As he puts it in his video, all things you find fun, pleasurable, or entertaining are strictly forbidden. Now, the goal is simple. Deprive the brain of as much dopamine as possible in pursuit of a typical neurochemical rebound effect. So what's the amateur theory behind this dopamine fast? Well, this understanding of dopamine fasting theory is based on two major ideas. First, things like food, sex, and generally the internet, technology though is complicated, 
All these things release dopamine in the brain. Secondly, the theory suggests that this barrage is constant enough to change the way that the brain processes the neurotransmitter. To exert all the pleasurable and rewarding effects that have made it so famous, dopamine binds to surface receptors on cells in the brain. The amateur theory of dopamine fasting says that we are constantly overloading these dopamine receptors in our brains, which is causing them to actually disappear. The idea is that our brains deal with this overload by reducing those receptors, which altogether keeps the pleasure signaling within the normal range. It also means that we're less sensitive to dopamine. The theory goes on to explain that stimuli like Netflix and junk food overstimulate us, inducing less motivation to do things in life. So, what do the experts think of this amateur theory? Does modern life actually cause dopamine overstimulation? Now, Dr. Eric Bauman, a neuroscience lecturer at the University of St. Andrews in Scotland was quoted as saying, my admittedly superficial understanding of the idea behind dopamine fasting is that modern life causes dopamine overstimulation, which in turn causes the molecular changes which calm down dopamine neurotransmission, but that this results in dopamine transmission being too low between rewards. A break from the fast pace of modern day rewards would allow the system to reset, or so the theory goes. Now add to this the real concept in neuroscience known as dopamine homeostasis. That's the concept that when we flood our bodies with too much dopamine over time, the body makes molecular adjustments to the dopamine receptors that dwell in the brain. But to get to the level where adjustments would happen would theoretically need very large changes in dopamine neurotransmission, most likely due to drugs or neurological disorders. So the question is, is modern life dopamine rich enough to stimulate similar adjustments? Even though we may feel overwhelmed by normal life, are we really soaking our brains in a dopamine rich bath every time we order takeout or scroll through Instagram? And is that enough to really cause changes in the brain? Dr. Kent Berridge, a psychologist at the University of Michigan, thinks that there may actually be some truth to the idea that dopamine is all around us. But to say whether or not human dopamine receptors actually do decrease is complicated. Berridge explains in animal studies where the animal is exposed to high fat dopamine igniting diets, receptor reduction happens temporarily and receptors mostly come back during abstinence. When it comes to humans though, the answer is a bit controversial and it may depend partly on the context and mostly comes from studies on people who use drugs and alcohol. Even if this is a reward rich world, we still don't know whether it's rich enough to cause lasting changes in the brain. Taken together, Bowman says, actually some ideas behind the dopamine fast seem to check out when examined in isolation, but not all of them. Overall, I think it's plausible that dopamine fasting might modestly impact upon the dopamine system, but no doubt it has effects on many other brain and body systems, he says. Until somebody measures dopamine function before, during and after dopamine fasting, we will not know if it actually changes dopamine function. So in sum, the academic jury is out. The simple answer is we just don't know if dopamine saturation is actually happening and we don't know if dopamine fasting therefore has an effect either. But does it actually matter? If it makes you feel better, does the pathway matter at all anyway? It's not proven that you truly need to remove pleasure from your life to get something out of a dopamine fast, at least not scientifically. But there's something to be said about having a reason to put down your phone or a way to hit that mental reset button. Ultimately, it's excusing yourself for choosing to have some downtime, as long as that downtime is productive. Sorry, that's cynical me again. Okay, I hope you've enjoyed this video and found it interesting. I really enjoy producing them and I really care about public mental health, which is why I'm doing this. If you did enjoy it, please give it a like and consider subscribing too. And hey, sharing this resource with others and encouraging them to watch and subscribe too will also really help me out. Thank you so much for choosing to watch this video. See you again soon, I hope. Cheers and go well.